Welcome to Conscious Conversations, a place where East meets West, a place where conversations and ideas will challenge your minds, expand your consciousness, awaken your heart, and make you think more deeply about yourself and the world. Hello, everybody. And welcome to Conscious Conversations. I'm your host, Anthony Perfetta, and I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Wes Gordon. How are you doing today, Wes? Very good. Very good. Good. You have a wonderful week? Absolutely. Busy? Always. Oh, good. Happy to hear that. Well, um, today I thought that maybe we'd converse a little on the topic of knowledge and wisdom or like knowledge versus wisdom. Some people use these terms interchangeably, like they're sort of the same thing. But I'm more of the perspective that there is a difference between having knowledge and acquiring wisdom. I do believe believe that there's a difference between the two. And from my perspective and opinion, uh, I really find the defining factor attributed to a statement by a genius of a man. Some people might actually consider, some listeners out there, you might consider this man perhaps the pinnacle of genius and intelligence and his name was leonardo da vinci Mm. and leonardo da vinci said knowing is not enough we must apply and i believe in from my perspective on this or the difference between knowledge and wisdom i believe that the application is actually where the key is so this Uh, statement by da Vinci that knowing isn't enough, we must apply, is really where wisdom comes from. Um, For knowledge, I believe it's more like a understanding of facts, you know, to to get an education, to read books, to do all these things is to acquire knowledge. But the wisdom part comes from applying that knowledge that we've gained into our daily life. How about you? Absolutely. Especially in the spiritual walk, there's like a period of time, at least in my experience, where you are very hungry for literature or audio or any way you can get new information and start to integrate it. And as far as I'm concerned, that's the where your soil, you become the soil, the seeds are falling in. And the stuff that you're reading, you're developing the soil so that they can be grow and be fruitful. I like that. And the wisdom part is when you actually take it from your head because I've met a lot of people that are very spiritually knowledgeable. Right. But when it comes to the heart wisdom part, it seems like there's a, like a void there. There's an emptiness. But when you actually experience it and integrate it, I feel that's where the wisdom comes in. That's where you actually learn something. And it's part of you now. It's not just a concept. Right. Yeah, and that, that's, that application is really where it does become part of you. As I sort of said, knowledge is something where we've acquired. And I liked da Vinci's um, statement also because applying is like putting stuff into action. It's making an effort. And wisdom is taking the knowledge that we've gained, so this intellectual understanding of something, the education we get, the reading of these books, the teachings that we acquire, we now have an intellectual concept of and understanding of but i believe that the wisdom and the application and the effort of putting it into our daily lives is really where true understanding actually comes from it's a different sort of understanding because the application gives us the direct personal experience of what these teachings and um this knowledge is really talking about so it's different than just the a head concept yes it's now a direct experience of these teachings and concepts in a personal way yes i always use the story of the bicycle okay teaching somebody how to ride a bicycle right and talk about it all day long but until they actually get on the bike and experience it for themselves yeah it's just a concept in their head yeah i that i have a very similar um story that comes from uh, i believe it's one of the eastern traditions either hinduism or buddhism but it's also a a story that's been used extensively by people like uh, dr wayne dyer and many others of these self-development and uh spiritual teachers where they try where they try to define or uh, explain where maybe you're trying to teach somebody what a mango tastes like 
and they've never had any idea because they've never had a mango. And you're telling them, oh, it's, it's juicy and it's very sweet and it's a fruit. And they're getting a head concept or an understanding so that they can go out and say to somebody, oh yeah, a mango's a fruit and it's sweet and it's juicy, but they really have no idea of what that mango is. They don't have the true understanding of the mango until somebody goes out, grabs the fruit, and then gives it to them and says, here, taste this, this is a mango. And now they get the whole idea of absolutely what this um, true understanding of a mango really is. Before they had the direct experience of tasting it, it wasn't there. They just had a conceptual knowledge of maybe, oh, this is what a mango is like, but until you actually put it in your mouth, only then do you really know what it actually is. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Totally agree. And, and there's another um, thing I'd like to bring into the talk today, which is actually comes from the book of Proverbs, in which King Solomon, who was considered by many to be the wisest of all times, at least in the Jewish faith and the Jewish tradition, but, you know, his wisdom was um, known throughout basically the entire world, and the Queen of Sheba came to him and uh, considered a very, very wise individual. And he's considered to have been the writer of the book of Proverbs, which according to the Jewish and Christian tradition say that he is. And in the book, chapter 4, I believe it is, he says that seek wisdom and seek understanding. He says, even if you have to go out and sell everything you have to acquire wisdom, do that. Do it at all costs. And what I love about the whole wisdom aspect in the scriptural texts is that wisdom is considered an attribute, a quality that was actually with God from the very beginning. And wisdom is personified in the book of Proverbs as a female energy, a, a, a feminine energy. And within many of the spiritual traditions and ancient philosophies, the original name of wisdom was Sophia. And Sophia became the goddess of wisdom. And then this word Sophia became attributed to wisdom basically throughout the world. But he tells people to go out and acquire it no matter what. And he says to acquire it again, it needs to be something that you go out and make an effort to attain. It's not like you're just going to be able to get this through like osmosis. You know, you actually have to understand and um, get it. And the thing about wisdom is it overflows into all of these other texts and ancient philosophies known as Gnosticism. And Gnosticism, wisdom, plays a huge part in their belief. And Gnostics are someone who believe that they have this um, knowledge that others don't. And it's like the true knowledge. So true uh, knowledge is gained through the understanding of wisdom. And wisdom is what is the direct experience of this knowledge, according to the Gnostics. So again, it's like this application of taking knowledge, not just letting it be a head thing, mm -hmm. and now putting it into our life so we can actually acquire something deeper. Because okay. wisdom is a deeper understanding of just what a bunch of facts are. Because knowledge is just learning a bunch of facts. I have uh, a friend who is actually a theologian, and he was trained in Harvard. He went to Harvard uh, Theology School. And if I say any quote, from any sacred text, he can know exactly, he can tell me exactly what chapter, what verse, and everything that this came from. Right. So he's a great intellectual. He's a brilliant guy, brilliant mind, probably one of the most brilliant that I know. And, you know, he has all of this stuff memorized in his head, it probably has a photographing memory, mm. but he's able to just spew out, oh, that's chapter this, verse this, no matter what, if it's from the Quran, if it's from the uh, Bible, if it's from the Dhammapada, or if it's from the Vedas or anything else. Wow. Yeah, very brilliant guy. However, he himself would say, but all of these concepts I haven't ever really implemented into my life. So right then and there, I said to him, so what you're saying is you have knowledge, but you would say you don't really have wisdom, and he agreed with that. He said because even really? for him, it's the application of putting this knowledge into our own lives that give us the direct experience on if these teachings are really valid and true. Only once you see it directly do we have the understanding of that. And you experience it. Yep, and experience it for yourself. Yeah. 
And so that's, um, and from my opinion, the whole difference between this knowledge and wisdom thing is wisdom is the actual application of any knowledge that we have. But I think that we need to take a break here for a moment. And when we come back, what we'll talk about is how does this apply to our life? You know, how does this apply to conscious living, to spiritual growth, to personal development? Who cares about, you know, the difference between knowledge and wisdom? And that's something that we'll talk about when we come back after these messages. Why did the countdown stop? Because it's the countdown to Buzz TV Channel 1098, Comcast Xfinity, and it's here. Local content for Sebastian Vero and Fort Pierce. Tune in for local info, happenings, and fun, including all the great Planet Vero TV shows from 8 to 10 a.m. and p.m. Dial in Channel 1098 for Buzz TV on your Comcast Xfinity box and discover what the buzz is all about. Why did the countdown stop? Because it's the countdown to Buzz TV Channel 1098, Comcast Xfinity, and it's here. Local content for Sebastian Vero and Fort Pierce. Tune in for local info, happenings, and fun, including all the great Planet Vero TV shows from 8 to 10 a.m. and p.m. Dial in Channel 1098 for Buzz TV on your Comcast Xfinity box and discover what the buzz is all about. The Polo Grill has reopened. Yes, Polo Grill is back open. Located on Ocean Drive, Polo Grill is open seven days a week, 4 to 9 p.m. daily, serving the most amazing steaks from Revere Ranch, fresh seafood and raw bar fare, all served in a stunningly beautiful restaurant by a professional team. Visit the website to make a COVID-friendly reservation or check out the new updated menu, along with beautiful outdoor veranda seating. 231. 4090. Millennium Cremation Service now has three convenient locations. Visit Millennium Cremation Service in Sebastian, Vero Beach, and now their newest location in Port St. Lucie's Tradition. A simple cremation is very affordable for just $7.95. Locally owned and operated, Millennium Cremation Service is proud to be the Treasure Coast on-site crematory. Reach out when you are in need to Millennium Cremation Service, 772-999-5547. Online at MillenniumCremationService.com. Blue Dolphin Pools strives to provide quality service with a well-trained staff in the field and in the office. They want you to know that your pool or spa investment means much more to them than just another account. They believe you have entrusted them with your investment and they'll do their best to see that it stays in top condition. Blue Dolphin Pool has been in business over 35 years, setting them apart from the competition. Residential or commercial, Blue Dolphin will keep you in the swim. 567-5853. conversations. I'm Anthony Perfetta and I'm here with co-host Wes Gordon and we're talking about knowledge and wisdom and what we were saying before the break was that knowledge is really just a sort of intellectual understanding. It might be knowing facts, it might be knowing teachings, be able to you know regurgitate all of these facts and ideas that we have learned through education or reading of books. But we were saying that wisdom is a little bit different. It's true understanding because it's putting the application or applying the wisdom or the, sorry, the knowledge that we have mm -hmm. into our lives so that we gain wisdom. But now I thought that we direct this conversation into why does this matter? <laughs> you know, what is, who cares if uh, there is a difference between knowledge and wisdom? How does it apply to conscious living or living consciously or spiritual growth or spiritual development? What do you think? Well, uh, you know, for me, it's like I said, there's a period of actual learning, preparing the soul and getting these principles and concepts into your mind. <clears throat> and then after that stage, it's putting them into practice or living them as best that you know how. And there's where I get a lot of questions from people that are on the path or trying to be more spiritual is how do you know which voice to listen to? Ah, and that's a good one. That takes a little bit of time. And discernment. <laughs> Very much so. And that's that's where some people <clears throat> don't want to <clears throat> don't want to hang out and do it. They get right. all <clears throat> they get frustrated with it because you have to do it, follow your hunches based on these principles or these truths that you've learned, and you base your actions on those because you're hearing an inner voice lead you. And then when you're doing it from your head, 
you'll do that a few times and then you'll find out because it usually blows up in your face <laughs> that hey that was all west that that wasn't the divine that was me thinking i was i'm going to back up and, and rethink this and be more silent and yes. listen to that still small voice and pretty soon you start getting used to it and you know the difference you right. know when it's just coming from yourself yes and the fruits of that are awesome oh yeah <laughs> because then when you know we, the thing is to realize we don't have to be in control of everything. Yes. And when we're trying to control everything, we're usually not coming from the, um, the deepest level of wisdom and understanding that innate wisdom that is already within us. But I don't want any of the listeners and viewers to think that in any way, shape or form, we're downplaying knowledge or anything like right. that. Knowledge, exactly. knowledge is useful. Knowledge is wonderful. And to, it's very admirable to be able to acquire a vast amount of knowledge and be able to share, uh, you know, all the knowledge that you do have with yes. others and maybe point them in certain directions and guide them in certain things. But again, knowledge just to me and my perspective is meaning that we have really just memorized or learned a bunch of stuff intellectually, but wisdom is knowing if what we've really acquired is of value, mm -hmm. how it, how it applies to our life. And so in terms of my view on how wisdom applies to spiritual growth, to conscious living, to personal development is, you know, I teach mindfulness meditation and many other sort of methods and practices, you know, throughout the United States and in other places as well. But I've seen a lot of people in their life sort of running from one thing to another. So they run from a certain class or a certain, from one class to another, from one workshop to another, from one seminar to another, or they devour a certain uh, book. And then it's right after they're done with it, they're off and they're running and they're taking another book and filling their head with all of that. And I've seen that there's a lot of times where they're not actually taking what they've learned and taking time to process it, right. taking time to truly implement it and now see, okay, what I've learned from this workshop or what I've learned from this book, how is it going to be beneficial to me? And there are many traditions out there, Vipassana meditation retreats, for example, or um, many other uh, teachers out there that will ask people to truly give 100% attention to what they're working with and mm -hmm. take the time to truly implement it. Don't bring other practices into it. Uh, just focus on this alone so you could really see how it's feeling for you, how it's unfolding for you, and really implement the knowledge that you gain and see what it does for you. And that's where we see, you know, what works for us, what's beneficial for us. And that's also where we see what teachings might hold true for us and what might be something that we, you know, don't truly resonate with. And that's perfectly fine. That's why there are so many ways right. of spiritual growth, of spiritual development, of personal growth. There are many different paths we can follow. There's many different teachers we can follow. They're all trying to lead you to the same place. You know, I applaud anyone who's trying to better themselves, whether it's through anything, whether it's through any sort of tradition, whether it's through any sort of um, secular practice, whatever it might be, moral practices, moral living. Anything that you're trying to do to better yourself in some way, I definitely applaud you for that. But we can learn a new self-development program, or we could l start reading about a new spiritual ritual or practice, but the only way we're going to be bettered from it is by taking it and implementing it and seeing how it works for us or how it applies to us. And from my perspective, that's where wisdom truly takes hold, and that's why wisdom is important to personal growth, conscious living, and spiritual development. Yeah. Isn't there like a saying that says, if you're very wise, it's only because I've made more mistakes than you did <laughs> yes. to get there? Yeah, the, and that is a wonderful thing. I, I think it was, um, now I don't know if this is actually factual or not, but there is a story that goes around uh, and has been quite well known where it says Thomas Edison failed 999 right. times trying to invent the light bulb but what he said was, it wasn't a failure. I just learned 999 ways that didn't work. Right. So he was gaining the wisdom, wisdom of knowing, okay, this wasn't the right way. This wasn't the right way. And finally, he kept trying, kept implementing these ideas that he was coming up with until finally one clicked. And then now we all have light. <laughs> exactly. That's why the Bible talks about the pearl of great price. Right. 
Because if you're actually doing the work, you're going through all these things and you're learning lessons that are unique to your experience. They're very valuable to you and you should treasure them and they're sacred. Right. And you just don't give those away carte blanche because, it, you know, it's a very personal and in this click button remote society, nobody wants to do that. I want Jesus in an instant blender. Woof. Right. I want Christ. I want light worker. I want aura, aura knowledge. I want the, uh, the Akashic records. Poof. Yep. Instant <clears throat> gratification. Yes. You know, but what um, many people don't realize is even a doctor, you know, it takes four years of college, four years of medical school, internships, residencies, all of these sort of things before they're going out and practicing. <laughs> you know, they're, they're working under some other people and training and doing all this. But there's years and years and years of study and implementing yeah. this stuff to see what happens. And that's what we have to do, too. In this world of instant gratification, there's this false idea that, you know, we can just become automatically wise mm. like without any effort involved <laughs> and even the dalai lama when that soul is found you know he's not taken and automatically put on the throne and everything that comes out of this child's mouth is now gold he is actually trained for 35 years under other teachers to help him reawaken to what he had learned and knew in previous lifetimes, according to the Buddhist tradition. And falling into this whole idea of wisdom and knowledge, the Zen tradition of Buddhism also has a wonderful statement where they say, to know and not to do is not yet to know. So to have the knowledge but not implement it means you still don't really know. <laughs> and so another thing that also I love from the whole Buddhist tradition is the teaching of the Buddha himself, there is a, a saying that is attributed to him, and it, it's where he's teaching people all of these ideas, and he's giving a teaching, but he says, listen to the crowd, don't believe what I say just because I'm saying it. Right. You know, don't believe what you read just because you read it in some great book, or you hear it from another great teacher. He says, take what you're hearing. Take these teachings and then implement them into your life and you see directly for yourself Absolutely. what is true, what is not, what is skillful, what is not, what leads to wholesome things, what leads to positive things, and what leads to negative things. Then, he says, then believe them and live them in that way. Absolutely. And so I think that's a great uh, teaching summed up in really everything that we're talking about today because all of these spiritual masters enlightened beings they can talk about enlightenment they can talk about union with god they can talk about mystical connection they can talk about all this stuff but we can't fully understand what union with god is what a mystical experience is what a kundalini awakening is we'll, we'll never know it until we actually have these experiences ourselves and that's you know the tasting of that mango so to just have an understanding up here is not enough that's why when people would ask the buddha what enlightenment is he would never say what it is he would say what it is not and in the eastern traditions of um, hinduism many of those branches when they're talking about god they'll never say what god is they'll only say what it is not it's not this not this neti 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 not this not this not this uh -huh. and so you will hopefully just say okay well let me try to find out what it is for myself rather than trying to give you some conceptual understanding of what it might be, you know, which is, again, just some concept, just some label. But we want the direct experience. We want to taste it. Yes. And that's true wisdom. Yep. Yeah. And that's the difference between <clears throat> immature and, and a mature spiritual person is really serious. Yes, because they put in the work, they put in the yep. effort. They're not afraid of the effort. They're not afraid of the hard work. They're, um, they know that that's part of the path. Exactly. Part of the practice is now taking these teachings and living them in our life. Like, I want to live forever, but I don't want to take a year or two to figure it out. <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> but I think we need to uh, stop there for today. Yes. Uh, again, went very fast. I thank you all, all of you who are listening, all of you who are watching. I thank you very much, Wes, for being here and uh, joining with us every week on these conscious conversations. And I look forward to uh, talking to you again next week. Please know that you can catch us live streamed on Facebook every Wednesday. You can catch us on Buzz TV if you're in Indian River County. That's on Comcast Xfinity every Tuesday at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. on Channel 1098. And you can catch us on the uh, radio on 101.7 uh, Real Radio every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. As well as on Spotify and um, some other uh, 
outlets, I believe iTunes as well. So thank you again. We love you, and we look forward to talking to you again next week.